For someone claiming to dislike Isekai, I sure have made a lot of videos talking about Isekai as of late. And why not? It's a really varied genre, some of it is good, most of it is terrible, and once in a blue moon, along comes that one show, that shining star that defines the genre and stands so far above its peers, it's not even funny. And for Isekai, that one just happens to be the granddaddy of modern Isekai, Mushoku Tensei Jobless Reincarnation. Hello and welcome you beautiful people. That's right, there actually exists an isekai which I like. Besides Saga of Tanner the Evil, which is great, Gate which isn't, but I still like it, and ReZero that I still need to make a video about. And maybe I don't actually hate isekai as much as I think I do. Oh, no, wait, yep, still definitely hate most isekai. But not Mushoku Tensei. And before I go any further into that, uh, almost 96% of you guys who watch my videos aren't subscribed, so it would be great if you could hit that button as I'm trying to reach that magical 1000 this year. So then, about that there Mushoku Tensei. It is considered the grandparent of modern isekai, which might be a surprise to some as the anime adaptation is quite recent, but the story itself is actually kind of old. Oh fuck me if that's old then I'm ancient. But despite its age, it avoids the biggest problem that plagues other older isekai like Sword Art Online. The tropes in it are the same now overused ones, but somehow they don't feel dated or boring. I mean, it is all fairly standard isekai stuff. The main character, Rudy as Grey Rat, or Rudy for short, is not just an unusually pervy baby. He used to, in fact, be an overweight hentai addicted social outcast in his early 30s who one day got hit by a truck and died, and was then whisked away to be reborn in this world of fantasy and magic. But hey, at least his life wasn't all wasted, as he still has his memories intact, which should mean that he also brings to this predominantly medieval world his modern 21st century values. <laughs> Too bad his values may be just a tiny bit skewed from, you know... Good thing then that these values fit right into this family, I mean the entire house of Grey Rat is known for being far too horny for their own good. And well, that is how things go. Rudy grows, he learns magic at a young age since refined cognitive skills from actually being an adult inside and all that, he lives the happy life he never had in his previous life and gets up to all sorts of silly antics, mostly including perving on everyone and everything not sporting a penis, until being what passes for a functional adult in his new world and then the grand advent adventure can begin. And if that sounds like a really generic and typical isekai plot to you, well, you'd be correct, because it is. But then what makes it so good? Good question, glad you asked. Having reviewed anime for a while now, I usually say how a good show has great characters, an engaging story, it looks good and the sound design is stunning. But these alone don't a good show make. I mean, they do, but that's not the point. Sure, Mushoku Tensei has all those things, but that is not what turns it from a good anime into an amazing one. No, it achieves that by paying attention to the details, and it does this in everything. From the world building, to the story, all the way to the characters and their motivations, and the result is the most alive and tangible fantasy experience I have seen in an anime, let alone in an isekai, where the standard approach is to build the world for a maximum of a single episode and then it's off to adventuring, have fun. But not here. The start of the first season is more or less just a fantastical slice of life. It's Brudius and his family living their lives, meeting new people and overcoming family issues, like why both father and son behave like hentai protagonists. All the way to Rudy getting a job at the ripe old age of seven, since, you know, medieval society, what even our child labor laws. Now, sure, this kind of a very protracted start might ruin a lot of other shows. I mean, when the biggest problem the main character faces is trying to figure out how to deal with his father's infidelity or that his teacher might find out that he stole her panties, the stakes aren't all that high for what promises to be a fantasy epic about gods, dragons and dragon gods. But naturally, there is method to such madness. I mentioned how everything in Mushoku Tensei is rife with meticulous detail, which makes it so damn good, and that is exactly why it takes time to get going. Everything is given a reason for being the way it is. No matter how minute, there is some detail behind it all, and establishing that, well, takes time. If you don't intend to have an episode of just non-stop word vomit, that is. But as backward as it might sound, that is also what allows the story to be told in this way. Little bits of humanity is breathed into the characters, we are told how the world is the same as ours in some sense, and very different in others. 
it gets to the point where the world and the characters inhabiting it become something more than just parts of a story, which in turn makes it so engaging that you don't need those big world shattering events to keep the audience engaged and loving every bit of it. And then you get that big world shattering event that both changes everything and emphasizes how nothing has actually changed. Mushoku Tensei is a perfectly imperfect story filled with characters that come with a hefty dose of humanity. Nobody, not a single person in this tale is that absolute paragon of justice or just a pervert drooling over every girl they see since they've never been within the radius of your typical restraining order of the opposite sex. They all have layers upon layers of shortcomings and trauma they are now trying to overcome in a quest to better themselves. And nowhere is this more apparent than in Rudius himself. I mean, look at him. He was all the things a person ought not to be. Not because he chose to be a disgusting shut-in who was coming you could smell before you ever saw him, he was bullied beyond the brink where he just shut himself off from the world that caused him so much pain and trauma. And none of this is forgotten, even now that he has a new chance. Rudy's view of the world and people is so far skewed in the wrong direction that it affects everything he does. He doesn't just forget his trauma, but learns to live with it now that he is surrounded and supported by people that care for him. It's a redemption arc for a deeply flawed person that does things wrong, but is also willing to learn and to grow, to become a better person, and sure, not everything he does is worth rooting for or can even be justified, and that's the point. Rudy does things that are, well, creepy, and not in a horror kind of way, but in an incel kind of way. <sighs> Creepy, but that's also kind of the point. I reckon you're supposed to think that he is creepy. What Rudy does is wrong, and that is exactly how he is portrayed, by being in the wrong. He's not just some perfect poster boy done a full 180 and become an angel just because he grew to live with his past trauma. Not that learning to live with it means that he is now magically free from it either. When the world kicks him where it really hurts, Rudy goes back to his old ways of depression and hiding from the world as best he can, only to once more rely on other people to reignite his spark. That and he also gathers a nice set of brand new and exciting trauma to keep things interesting since this is not some sunshine and rainbows type of fantasy adventure. It's a detailed, realistic and gruesome world made to feel like a real one. Sure, there are those nice areas of peace and quiet like the one in which Rudy grew up in, but those are the exception rather than the norm. It is that harmless isekai world where nothing bad actually happens, until you're staring down the stump of someone's severed neck, unable to think from the shock and horror, all the while everyone around you is happily celebrating a fresh kill in the name of justice. Showing just how different things can be from what you or I might be used to, while still being believable. It's not trying to be grim dark for the sake of being edgy, it's trying to be realistic. And it is details like this where the true quality of Mushoku Tensei jobless reincarnation lies. Not in the shock and awe, but the meticulous detail that colors everything and makes you believe in the story that you're experiencing as something more than just a story. This is how the show can go from fighting gods and opposing slavery into trying to cure Rudy's erectile dysfunction all the while not losing any of its luster. It's simply an incredibly engrossing anime that is more than just another isekai. It's an experience, and if you don't want to take my word for it, the studio behind it, you know, Studio Bind, it was founded in order to bring this masterpiece of a story into the animated format. That is how much faith they had in this story, this world and these characters. And the same passion can be seen in every single scene and the show really deserves the title of pure cinema. Since it is as close to perfection as one can humanly get. A 10 out of 10 and a must watch.
Thank you for watching. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Did you agree or disagree with my verdict? If you liked this, like it, dislike it. If you didn't, subscribe for more anime goodness and check the links in the description if you want to engage with me outside of YouTube. With this, I have been Cheese and I hope to see you next time. Tata for now.